things are always working out for me no matter how it looks at any given point in time. Things are always working out for me no matter how they look at any given point in time. It is always working out for me. This universe is rigged in my favor. Be delusional. The exact opposite approach that I take to my patients in real life. But this isn't real life. This is about TikTok. I had the best day ever. I'm so glad I'm the luckiest person in the world. Like great things are always happening to me unexpectedly. I'm so lucky. Everything is always happening for me. That changes your frequency right there. My problem literally just went away because everything works out for me. So this is your time to try it. You literally have nothing to lose. Just look at how the world will change around you. Lucky girl syndrome, the trend of not just believing that your hopes and dreams are possible, but that they are inevitable and that they are already manifesting. It's labeled the snobbiest trend on TikTok. The practice of people claiming to be so lucky and everything works out for them has just been spreading everywhere throughout social media. And I quote, there is no better way to explain it than I feel like the odds are completely in my favor. Ever since I can remember, I have always made it a point to tell everyone I am so lucky, I just always expect great things to happen to me and so they do. It's a spin on positive affirmations and manifestation which is really big in the wellness sphere. Tell yourself that everything is going to work out for you and it will. It will? It will. Maybe. Possibly. There is zero evidence base to this, of course, but on this video I did want to think about the evidence-based psychological principles that this is loosely based on, and I stress loosely, and what might explain those times that it appears to work, and when it fails. If you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Dr. Elliot Carthy. I am a psychiatrist in the UK and I do videos about mental health, mental illness, and LGBT health. If you like that sort of thing, do check out some of the other videos and do consider subscribing. Ready? Let's crack on. A positive mindset can be really helpful in life. Indeed, we know that lots of chronic health conditions increase your risk of depression and that having untreated depression massively worsens outcomes. So if someone's being treated for cancer, for dementia, for heart failure, and then they have comorbid depression, we know that this can lead to a faster decline and greater morbidity and mortality, probably for multiple reasons, whether this is uh, more hopelessness or less motivation to actually engage in the treatment, whether this is taking your meds or other forms of rehab. And we also know that depression makes people more likely to isolate themselves, cut themselves off from their support network, so treating depression is really, really important, and we do that using the bio-psycho-social model. So medications, talking therapy, and lifestyle changes. Cognitive behavioral therapy is the most common psychological tool that is used to treat depression. It comes in many forms, some techniques focusing more on the behavioral side, some more on the cognitions, so the thought patterns. And it's the latter that we're gonna focus on when talking and trying to disentangle this concept of lucky girl syndrome. CBT starts with understanding how thoughts influence feelings, which influence physical sensations, which influence behaviors. Crucially, you need to be able to distinguish between what is a thought and what is a feeling. For example, I feel like a failure actually isn't a feeling. That's a thought and thoughts are not facts. So many cases of CBT will start with trying to map out this cycle of thoughts to feelings to physical sensations to behaviors. So disentangling how thoughts influence our feelings in a bi-directional relationship. We know that hopelessness is a symptom of depression. We might pin this down to a thought that things are not gonna get better, which makes us feel sad, upset, empty. It might then make us feel fatigued that might make us more socially isolated. Cause if it's not gonna get better, then what's the point and I'm too knackered anyway. We also know that that the outcomes of this can then be associated with confirmation bias. In this case, you may give more weight to those outcomes that are in keeping or align with the way that we feel and how we're thinking. In depression, I will give more weight to those negative outcomes than I will to any positive outcomes that occur, which then kind of reinforces this perception that the way that we think and the way that we feel is proportionate and justified, which of course it's not. That's depression and the way that it affects your mind. It then perpetuates the hopelessness and the cycle continues. If with good CBT, you can find ways of trying to put this negative way of thinking into context, so challenging these thoughts because they're not facts, it might help interrupt this cycle and then lead to your mood improving. So distinguishing thoughts and facts is really important here. So knowing this, these kind of positive affirmations that are then turned up to 11 in this case of lucky girl syndrome might create more of a positive confirmation bias. We then add more weight to those positive outcomes that align with our way of thinking with these mantras and manifestations that then increases our motivation to do more. However, it can make you just as likely to not see life in context as what happens in depression. Negative stuff happens. So using this as a defense mechanism mechanism to essentially try and avoid the bad stuff or suppress the bad stuff and live a life in denial just doesn't work. It also implies that you're always in control, which of course you're not, nobody is. When failures happen, we then think that we had some control over that failure or that it was always preventable. And of course it's not always preventable. Failures don't happen just because you weren't positive enough. That's a really dangerous mindset, particularly when you combine that thought pattern with seeing everybody's social media feeds with selectively showing you all the good bits in their life and sort of downplaying or ignoring the fact that there's loads of negatives happening too. By all means, 
dream big. Be confident in yourself. But failure is not something that can be or should be avoided. And not everything in life is in your control. Do not let pseudoscientific wellness trends, often from people with a lot more resources than most people have, lure you into this false sense of reality. That's my thoughts. Let me know what your thoughts are though in the comments below and I will see you for another video very, very soon. Love you, bye.